in championship winning team, apart from the Irishman, that is, uh, William O'Connell, who was in the British Olympic side, which won the bronze medal, you may remember, in Los Angeles. So, it's over live to Kenilworth Road for the rest of the first half and all of the second. No goes so far. Great Britain in red. Some rule changes made in hockey recently, by the way. We'll tell you about those as we go along. But now it's over to commentators James Duffy and Barry Davis. And the first law change to tell you about is the fact that you're going to be offside in the last 25 yards of the pitch. That line that you can see there in camera shot. It's the normal offside uh, law as in football if you are in that area, but if you're not, then you're not offside. We've uh, played 19 minutes here, and the first thing which strikes one, it's a year ago, of course, since England won the World Cup in glorious sunshine. Here the pitch is very wet, and the afternoon is quite cold, and we've had uh, a lot of rain, although it's not actually raining at the moment. Here's the familiar figure of Sean Curley. Um, free hit quickly taken for feet. Bachelor with the cross. Anyway, 20 minutes gone, 35 minutes each way. Just the odd sign from Great Britain, but uh, match a little untidy, I would think. I wonder whether Jim Duffy would agree with that observation. Yes, it's been a very busy start by the Malaysian side. They've uh, made it very difficult for Great Britain to settle down, and uh, so far we've seen two chances, both going to the Malaysian team. And John Hurst, who's um, making his first cap for Great Britain today, has made two very good saves so far. Here's the Irishman in the party, Billy McCullough, who is a very good, particularly defensive player on the left side. And uh, all about reaching the age of 36 before you win your first cap. That's the story of John Hurst, the first cap for Great Britain, that is. He's played 37 times for England. Here's Sean Curley, Richard Leman. And the free hit given for the obstruction. Potter and Leman together. Curley in the circle. Shiwani behind him. Quite a strong challenge by Jack Jick Singh, and they both acknowledge the clash of shoulders. That's a very good aerial ball, which runs to Zainel. He, in fact, leaves it to North Seifel. And they don't make the best of the opportunity, thanks to the efforts of Paul Barber. Very, very good use of the aerial ball, which is perfectly permitted, provided the ball does not land in the circle. That's another rule change, but if it lands as it did then, it can be a very useful weapon. And Paul Barber saving John Hurst, who'd had to come out, I think. But a penalty corner results. The first the Malaysia have had. Great Britain have had two and not scored from them. That's a very good start by John Hurst, who was down early to deny uh, Imbaraj. He arrived at the right time. Things were getting to hot up. Martin Grimley wearing number eight, playing it inside left for Great Britain, which is the first time he's played there for uh, the British side. Played at left half in the World Cup and uh, then played left wing. Richard Dodds. Shawani finding the big uh, number three in Barrage. One of a number of bank clerks in this side. In fact, there are so many of them, one wonders how the banks are surviving in Malaysia during the time they're in this country, the Malaysian hockey team. Imran Shawani, still running his news agency when he gets time to get there. Getting the long ball, there's a tremendous gap between midfield and the front players. They're keeping front players well forward. Uh, Soon Mustafa on the left and Noor Seifel on the right. Le Mans. Good play by the East Grinstead player. Still got a bit to do. Shawani. Rather dug out by Sajit Singh. Shawani. Grimley. Promising. Shawani. Still. Bachelor. Got a deflection. And Billy McConnell, I think, in there a little bit too sharply. And uh, England 
uh, England, Great Britain, Jim, really need the goal to settle them down, don't they? Yes, I think that's, um, as we see Batch's shot coming in there, that's certainly the case at the moment, Barry. England, might, we might have thought that uh, Great Britain were going to have an easy game today against the Malaysians, uh, a young, inexperienced side. But uh, certainly the Malaysia have got off their blocks and made an excellent start, and uh, Great Britain are really going to have to work to get this game under control. So I think all power to the Malaysians, because the weather obviously is not what they were hoping for. Well, we thought beforehand that this cold, miserable weather which we're getting in Luton today might put them off a bit, but uh, it doesn't seem to make any difference at their start. It's the Great Britain team bench, Roger Self. We can just see in the coach, David Whittaker with the glasses. Roger Self, the manager. Grimley. Shawani. Grimley. And, uh, obstruction turning free hit to Malaysia interested in their style Jim because they're playing the two wingers very wide there seems to be nobody up in the middle but they get players very well forward from the middle of the field well they certainly have uh, changed their pattern of play to suit these new rules um, now we've got offside until 25 good stop by Sajit Singh and uh, They've got two wide men and they're tucking these long aerial balls which are putting uh, Faulkner and Barber under a lot of problems. And uh, maybe they've been watching the, uh, the two fullbacks playing in the World Cup where in fact the two England fullbacks in that time had difficulty coping with the aerial ball. That's well stopped by McConnell. Oof. Clearly feet and up onto ankle and pretty painful for North Seifel. Strongly struck and uh, came really on the ankle bone. And in fact, uh, judging by the position the players are taking, it's been judged dangerous by McConnell. So the free hit when it comes will be to Malaysia. Decided so includes uh, six players from the under 21 World Championship team. Just in. Uh, Vancouver and really they are looking ahead whereas we're judging Great Britain in terms of uh, the Olympic Games talking to the uh, coach and manager of Malaysia yesterday Jim they're already looking ahead to the World Cup in Lahore um, and more particularly before that the Intercontinental Cup in New York in 1989 which of course is the qualifying for that World Cup yes Malaysia have gone through a very bad period in 84 they went to the Olympics and uh, to be honest, it was disastrous for them. And uh, they've um, weeded out a lot of their, their older players and have drafted in what seems to be a, a very young side, as you said earlier on, full of bank clerks and students, and uh, are now building up, hoping to become again uh, an important figure in world hockey. Well, Saifo trying to run off the injury on the far side. Here's McConnell who inadvertently caused uh, the problem. Richard Lamant. Stephen Batchelor. Sean Kelly. Instant shot again. Soft on the ball, seems to be right underneath his stick, but he manages to get the flick on it. Soon Mustafa. Good challenge by Potter. Well, initially it was, but then the obstruction. Sun Seng, tall number 13, in his 16th cap. This is Sajit Singh, one of three survivors in the team from uh, the Olympic Games of 84. Just too long. And I'm surprised that wasn't a judge to have gone out. But they have used that aerial ball very well. Shawani, that's good play. Richard Dodds, Grimley, good stop. Paul Barber drawn forward. Great Britain's free hit, another injured party. I think it's Mohamed Hyde 
D who's uh, hurt. It's the first time we've seen Barber in the opposition half. Crowd not too sympathetic. This is how the injury came. Well, he did rather ask for it, because you would... I, well, I can only assume that he slipped, actually. But it looks like a sliding tackle on a football pitch. We are, of course, playing on Luton Town's football pitch, although the dimensions are different. 100 yards by 60 yards. Every hockey pitch is the same size, which is not true, as we've seen recently in football. 27 minutes on the clock there, and the clock is being stopped when there is the injury. time the injured party has to go off three substitutes allowed but I think they'll wait There's seven minutes to go to half time it seemed to me to be a bit dangerous but it just went out of play and here is a gap for Sean Curley bachelor far post well he went in the goal but not the ball very good um, play there by Great Britain, straight from the start there. Caught the Malaysian side absolutely dead. And it's unfortunate there that Batcher just didn't quite get a touch. Two Malaysian fullbacks do tend to rather lunge in. And often, if they fail to make contact, leave space behind them. Well, they, they certainly go for the ball and uh, fully, and... Uh, and do they have quite often a bit curly. Very big swing, and uh, if they're not careful, uh, they're going to get caught out in this sort of pitch because uh, it only needs a slight touch and the, the ball will be taken away from them. And you can't afford to swing the stick around too much with uh, fast forwards like Sean Curley around. You can nip it off you. So, 28th minute. This is the first match in the Lada competition. No score. 28 minutes is from a clock which has been stopped for the stoppages. 28 minutes of actual playing time. Gary Fidelis wasn't uh, properly stopped by Martin Grimley. Came off his leg. Sun Seng. Again, that rather agricultural swing. That's feet, but the umpire allows it to go on. John Potter in possession. Two waiting, one is Curly. Well, he had to go for it. Although, arguably, uh, Shawani was better placed coming behind. But, of course, uh, the goalkeeper or the central defender might have intercepted. Aerial ball again, but almost into the crowd. Sajid Singh, he played in the Olympic Games when Malaysia finished in 11th, in 11th place. Only uh, the United States below them. Feet. Faulkner. Stephen Batchelor. David Faulkner. And all bar Barber and Hurst in the opposition half. That's a good start by Fidelis. Bachelor. Great Britain still looking for the opening goal of this tournament against the side they've uh, had an impressive record against. Meeting for the ninth time. Previous eight have produced five victories and three draws. And Great Britain's first goal would be their 21st against Malaysia. 
I think the team were a little bit anxious about getting it. Potter. Good defending. Potter. Not sure that was entirely intended. By Sun Mustafa. Bachelor. Feet. Again, advantage played. The umpire's trying to keep the game going. Grimley. Shawani. Grimley. It's uh, a free hit just outside the circle. Kelly. 16 yard hit. Kelly doesn't agree with the umpire's verdict. Obviously thought the goalkeeper had got his pads to it. Certainly the goalkeeper covered the near post well. Dodds. And I think that a substitution will be necessary for Malaysia. Mohamed Haidi is the injured party. Penalty corner given. Will it be third time lucky? They've all been from this side. Uh, obviously it was intended as a dummy. Penalty corner results. I think it was because one of the Malaysian players was too sharply off the line. Switch, Dodds. Well, who's pushing who? And in the end, the hit goes to Malaysia, but surely not from there. Now, oh, that's an amazing decision by the umpire. He'll in the pinch about 15 yards and leave half the England players sit in the circle, the Great Britain players sit in the circle. Anyway, Miss Fidelis. That's a long corner. Extraction by Le Mans. Still no score, 34 minutes on the clock, so we're into the last minute of the half. Potter. Right at the end of the half, Malaysia are to introduce their substitute. Who is David Jerome St. John Davis. Shawani. Dodds, good cover. There's a problem for the goalkeeper, who is the number two choice goalkeeper for Malaysia, Ahmad Sopian. You like John Hurst being given a chance this afternoon. And, uh, well, it surely can't be crammed. Hmm. Curious injury coming at the end of a slightly curious half in uh, many ways. 
Well, I think uh, the Malaysian goalkeeper might have been injured at the last short corner, which came off his foot and uh, high in the air. But, uh, it's uh, been a very hectic half. Uh, Great Britain haven't really settled down yet, and uh, maybe we're going to see the better of them in the second half. But uh, I've been impressed by Faulkner and Potter. They've tried to drive forward from the defence, tried to making things work, tried to make things work, and uh, McConnell has settled in very quickly, as being the kind of odd player out playing for Ireland. And all the stoppages of the half have amounted to five minutes. Faulkner. And the hooter goes, and we reach half time. And David Whittaker and Roger Self with a few things to sort out in the Great Britain team, who at the halfway stage of their opening match stand at nil nil with Malaysia. Mm, a bit tough out there for Great Britain this afternoon. We'll be back uh, live, of course, for the whole of the second half in around five minutes or so. But for now, we have a, a regular feature on the programme. We're calling it Team Talk. In other words, a look at the team news for tomorrow's league football programme, which comes in of the second half to our commentators, James Duffy and Barry Davis. Thank you, David. And in passing, I'm wondering who on the production team of Sport on Friday is a Norwich City supporter. It seems that uh, you're sporting their colours this afternoon. But here in the Hockey International, as you said, nil-nil, and that will be disappointing, Jim Duthie. I think England, uh, Great Britain would have expected to be in front by now. Yes, sir, we would expect them to be in front, but um, Malaysia have played well. I've, I've been impressed by their play. Um, as we can see on here, the Roger Self trying to drum up some um, extra effort from his side. But uh, as uh, Malaysia have played well, and uh, this aerial ball which they're throwing deep into the Great Britain defence has caused them a lot of problems. And it means that um, Barber and Faulkner, who usually like to push up a long way and, and, and stop the attacks early, have been forced back. And it's left gaps between the midfield and the defence of the Great Britain side, which has certainly caused them a great deal of problems. And they haven't been able to squeeze the Malaysian side as much as they'd like to. Course, we're all looking forward to Great Britain's challenge in the Olympic Games in Seoul when people are perhaps adding a little pressure to the team by uh, suggesting that after the silvers of uh, England in the World Cup and then in the European Cup, maybe the colour could be changed half a notch. But it is amazing when you look back what has happened in the last four years when we went to Los Angeles as the extra team after the Soviet Union's withdrawal. Well, yes, this this couldn't be, this might not be possible. Uh, this this whole tournament here, the World Cup, uh, the the money which has gone into the sport uh, has all come from the Olympics. When, as you said, Russia pulled out, and just by that, Great Britain went to the Olympics and uh, won a bronze medal there. And the hockey's never looked back. And most of those names have become pretty familiar. Certainly the likes of Sean Curley. The absence, though, of perhaps the other most famous member of the uh, squad, Ian Taylor. And said John Hurst gets a chance in goal. And in the opening minutes when England, uh, Great Britain, which is very difficult, that uh, really hadn't settled down at all. He made a couple of excellent saves. The other goalkeeper, uh, the Malaysian goalkeeper, Ahmad Sofian, has recovered during the half-time interval and has taken his place. putting all the gear on. All this second half gets underway. Pakistan and Poland. Pakistan, the Olympic champions. The other two teams in this competition. And they play later this afternoon. And we'll be seeing the best of that match too. Great Britain attacking the goal to our left. David Faulkner in possession. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether there is a change of tactics from Great Britain. The Malaysians have certainly started the half with uh, the two wide players. But not with the best of flicks trying to find the aerial ball. This is Fidelis.
No obstruction given. Chuani. McConnell. Barber. Faulkner. Bit of fly swatting going on. By Imbaraj. Dracula trying to bore his way through, but unfairly, according to the Polish umpire. Jackjit Singh. Potter. Richard Leman. Fidelis. They covered well and harried well the uh, Malaysians. Disappointing uh, thing is that the more experienced Great Britain side haven't really managed to settle into a real pattern. Sean Kelly, we've seen a couple of bursts from him. Good pass, Bachelor, Curley didn't really get the cross. Bachelor again, this is more promising. Good stop by Jack Jit Singh. What a good game, the man playing at the back. Fidelis. Potter. Still two England players in the circle. And it's interesting with this new change of law about only being offside in the last 25 yards. We've only had one offside decision in the match so far. Potter. Still Potter. Curly. Typical move. Potter. Goalkeeper manages to get a stick to it. And the hit is Malaysia's way. Just got a stick there, did uh, Sofian. John Davis. Badaj. Good stuff on reverse sticks by uh, Paul Barber. McConnell. Grimley. Intended for Dodds. That was a good pass. Hurst. Come to be done. John Hurst. Albans. Oof. Ball was undercut dangerously, so the hit goes to Great Britain on the point where the uh, strike was made. More Seifel, the offender. Richard Dodds trying to get Great Britain going. Had four minutes of the second half and still no score. We're into the fourth minute. Typical interception by Barber. 